Okay, hello everyone. In this video we are going to be talking about the yield to maturity of a bond, how it's related to the price, and how it's decided through Marquette equilibrium. So, in the last video we had a look at these major characteristics of a bond, and basically if you know all five of these things here, then you know the full cash flow structure of the bond. So what I mean is you know all of the payments that are going to come through, what their amounts are, and when they're going to be made. So we know these things, however what we really want to know is something that we can use to compare different bonds. Because we've got a lot of things here, but how can we take one quick look at two bonds and decide which one would we prefer to invest in? Which is more profitable? And this is where our yield to maturity comes in. So if you've done a bit of finance already, you might be familiar with some different methods of comparing investments. And one of these is the internal rate of return. Now, the internal rate of return is basically a effective annual average rate that you make over the life of the loan. So it's similar to if you had a bank account that gave you annual interest, what would the interest rate on that account need to be? so that the average return you're making between the bank account and between the investment is the same. That's your internal rate of return. The internal rate of return on a bond, under the assumption that you're holding it until maturity, is called the yield to maturity. And the yield to maturity we use to compare different bonds and say which one's more profitable. A higher yield to maturity means a more profitable bond. So, these things actually determine our yield to maturity. So think of them as inputs and we can use an equation and get a yield to maturity as an output which gives us a single number that we can use to determine how profitable a bond is. So as I've just said it comes from these five things. What's important to note though is that once you've decided on these sort of bottom four here if you hold them constant, the yield to maturity is actually just a function of the price of the bond. So when you decide what the price of your bond is going to be, having decided these elements already, you are deciding on the yield to maturity. So these are almost, almost like two representations of the same thing actually, but with the very important distinction being that you can't use the price to compare bonds with different maturities and different coupon rates and stuff like that because they're not really comparable in that way, but they are comparable using the yield to maturity. So now this is where we start to get a little bit of economics involved. So the yield to maturity is our way of measuring the profitability of our bond. So depending on the yield to maturity, we expect that in the market, there will be a certain number of bonds being demanded by the market and a certain number of bonds being supplied by the market, all according to what the yield to maturity is. So as the yield to maturity goes up, we expect that the market will demand more of that bond because buyers will want to take on those bonds because they get a greater return on their investment. Naturally, a better, more profitable investment is something you want more of. However, we also have a supply that decreases in the number of bonds as the yield to maturity increases. And this is because the yield to maturity can also be thought of as sort of the effective interest rate that the sellers are paying on the debt that they've taken. Remember from our last video, bonds are a debt instrument and the sellers are taking on debt and then paying it back via the coupons and all that. So we have this little intersection point here. At this intersection point, this is the yield to maturity that we will typically see bonds selling at. And you will see that this is the case by considering what happens if bonds are sold at a different yield to maturity. So. We make an assumption about the market that there's lots and lots of buyers and sellers 
and we assume that they are very well informed, which means that they know what yield to maturity other bonds are being sold at in the market. So if bonds are being sold at this level here, at a high yield to maturity, there's only going to be so many bonds being supplied by the market, which is going to be quite small compared to the demand. So there's lots of buyers who want bonds at this level, but they can't get them because they've been sold out. So when you've got this surplus demand here, you'll see that there are some extra sellers who would be willing to offer them at a lower yield to maturity and yet still enough demand for these to be bought up. So somebody's going to see the excess demand, step in, offer at a lower yield to maturity, and those are going to be bought up. And when they are bought up, our informed sellers are going to say, well, if we can get away with selling them at a lower yield to maturity, let's do that. And so you get this pressure driving the price down. But it stops here, because at this point, number of buyers, I mean, amount of demand matches amount of supply, and so if you try, if somebody else tries to step in and sell it at this level, there are no more buyers, so it stops here. It works the same in the opposite direction. If the yield to maturity is too low, you've got too many suppliers who want to sell bonds at that low yield to maturity, but not enough people out to buy them. So once all the buyers have bought and you've got these excess suppliers trying to, get, trying to sell off bonds, some of them are just going to have to suck it up and offer a higher yield to maturity, which will prompt new buyers to step in and purchase. And so our informed buyers will then say, well, if we can purchase at this higher yield to maturity, then let's stop buying it at the low one. And so you get a pressure driving it up. And so we get an equilibrium here as a result of these two opposing forces. And so in this manner, the market decides on what the yield to maturity on bonds is going to be. And then from that yield to maturity, the price can be determined through the equation between price and the other factors and yield to maturity. And we're going to look at how that works in the next video. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.